Behind me are five retaining walls and three complex slabs, which will require $400,000 and six months of work. All of this is necessary to build the perfect foundation on a slope. These are the three most important stages of building a foundation on a slope. This is a must-have that you can't skip. I highlight three crucial stages for building the perfect foundation. The first crucial aspect is proper foundation design. The second essential element is meticulous step-by-step -step construction. And the third is preventing future damage. The design process always starts with a comprehensive topographic survey. Once you have the topographic survey and architectural design, you need to move on to structural engineering. That is, the structural engineer must create the correct design. For this, and this is important, you need to get a soil report or geo report. That is, you order this separately, pay for it, but this money will pay off. A soil report costs about $3,000, that's the average. But your engineer will know the exact input data, and based on the soil report, will determine what kind of rebar, what kind of concrete, and what other characteristics to include in the structural design. This is an extremely important element, when you have received the topography, the soil report, and have handed over the architectural design to the structural engineer, I recommend discussing all the details with them before they start drawing. Why is that? Because there are different ways to design the same retaining wall. It could be a foundation slab, piers, or another approach to building the foundation. This short conversation can save you tens of thousands of dollars. If you discuss in detail the budget you want to stick to, that you have a soil report, what kind of soil is there, it might be possible to change something in the architectural design to have fewer retaining walls or a shallower footing. When you get the topography and soil report, discuss them with the engineer and provide the final architectural design, your engineer will create the perfect plan for the ideal foundation. Why is it so important to approach the design process in detail when building a foundation on a slope? For example, if you didn't order a topographical survey and your architect placed the design on a regular survey without topography or elevation levels, the engineer created the design. You try to find the zero point, and it ends up either deep underground or, on the contrary, high above the ground. Your foundation is floating in the air. It is very important to have a topographical survey when building on a slope, which is not necessarily required when building on a flat site. You can simply get the four corners of your lot and not get a topographical survey, because a flat lot doesn't require it. Soil report. If you are building in those parts of America where the ground is soft, where there is no bedrock or limestone, most likely your engineer won't even start working on the foundation without a soil report, because different soils interact with the foundation in different ways. When there is a lot of erosion, you definitely need to think about how you will protect your foundation in the future from water flow and pressure. That's why the soil report is the second most important thing in the design process. Building a house? Sign up for a consulting meeting. The project is ready, and now we move on to construction. The difference between a flat lot and a sloped lot is significant in that you can't build on a slope in a single stage. If you have a lot of retaining walls, if your foundation has several levels, if the slab is on multiple levels, you most likely won't be able to pour your foundation all at once. And that's not right. Why? Right now, I'm standing at the first stage of pouring the garage slab. This garage slab has already passed all inspections. We received the structural engineering report and we poured the foundation. And this served as our base. Why? We spent several months on it because here we precisely measured where the zero point is. That is, we measure the first floor elevation from this point because from this foundation, the work continues and the formwork is installed, meaning the forms for the retaining wall. The elevator, which people will use to go up to the second and third floors of the house, is also anchored to this foundation. From this foundation, we will calculate all other elevations and the driveway will extend from it to the road. The first stage in building on a slope is the foundation of the zero floor from a construction perspective. Not the first floor elevation foundation, where people will live and which the architect has designated as the first residential floor. No, it's that zero level foundation from which you start building. So why can't you build everything on a slope all at once? You can't pour the foundation with the retaining wall and the second floor all at once. Look, the first stage is done. Next, this serves as our support. From this support, we can already start building the wall. In other words, we need something to brace the forms against. Now we have a clear form. After the wall is in place, you need to backfill it with drainage. So only after the concrete is ready, the drainage is installed, and then the second slab is built, the level of the second floor. And even when assembling this wall, it's often not possible to pour it all in one go, because pouring requires vibration. Or you use shotcrete, as in this case, which also can't be poured more than eight or nine feet at a time. In other words, there are technical requirements that will force you to pour it in several stages. Another reason why it's unlikely 
you'll be able to pour the foundation on a slope all at once is because you have utilities running through the foundation. For example, the sewer pipe and the water pipe. And you can't lay the entire pipe at once. You'll have to do it in parts. In this case, we managed to route the pipe into a separate room, so we didn't have to embed it inside the retaining wall. But if you can't route the pipe into a separate room, you'll have to run it inside the retaining wall, and you won't be able to do that all at once. You also won't be able to pass inspection all at once. We've already gone through several city inspections here. They inspected the ground, they inspected the sewer line, and they inspected the water line. And the structural engineer came to inspect the rebar and ensure compliance with the structural drawings. So you have to go through inspections at each stage separately, and you can't pour everything at once precisely because each element contains these components. And how can you possibly do this in just one or a few days? It's simply technically impossible. On a slope, the foundation will definitely have to be built in stages. You start from scratch, then comes the retaining wall, if you have one, then the next level, then another retaining wall, and the next level. You've probably noticed that almost all slabs, all driveways, have micro cracks. This is a normal situation. That is, concrete does crack, but the crack should not exceed one millimeter and a credit card should not be able to fit into it. Rebar is extended so it can be tied to the next level. It's essential that when you build in stages, step by step, you extend the rebar so it can be tied to the next level. If you don't do this, there is, of course, a solution. You can drill holes and set the rebar in place using a special adhesive. That works too, but to avoid having to do this later, as a consequence, to fix the consequences, it's better to look at the project in advance to see where your rebar will come out, in which places the elements of the slab, retaining wall, or regular wall will be connected. And to make these extensions, every builder knows that rebar is extended to tie together the elements of the foundation. On a slope, this is absolutely crucial. Then it becomes a single, solid, monolithic foundation when all the rebar is tied together. Choosing the concrete. Usually in the project, you might find the phrase the concrete should be 3000 PSI. But I recommend talking to your concrete supplier and getting a little bit higher. For regular, standard, classic concrete, it's better to work with 3500 PSI. This gives the concrete better hardness and greater strength. If you're working with shotcrete, its structure and composition are almost the same, but its PSI is 4500, and that's better. Shotcrete is better to use for retaining walls, for example, to reinforce a wall against collapse. In other words, shotcrete can be applied without formwork. For example, in this case, for this high wall, we will make double formwork and pour regular concrete with vibration inside. But for a wall that isn't very tall, up to 8 feet, it can be poured with shotcrete, and formwork on just one side is enough. The most popular material in Texas for protecting your foundation and walls is liquid mastic. There are many brands that you can find online. How does it work? You buy a bucket of liquid mastic and simply use a roller to thoroughly coat the wall. It has a kind of rubber component, and when it hardens, it really forms a rubber-like layer between your house wall and the soil or ground that will come into contact with it. Advantages, it's a seamless layer, meaning there are no joints, you've coated everything. It's not that expensive, it has very high elasticity, and um, it works well on complex shapes. Because if your foundation has a lot of bends, it's very difficult for other types of waterproofing materials to replicate that. But with liquid mastic, it's easily done. The second most popular material is a type of membrane. That is, you buy a special membrane, the kind with bumps, and install it on the wall. It protects against the pressure of water and material. These bumps stick outwards and they kind of prevent pressure by vibrating, meaning they resist this pressure. Of course, such a membrane is more expensive. Ideally, it's best to use both the liquid and the membrane. It's called a dimpled membrane, also known as drainage mat or protection board. These can be boards or it can be a roll material that is glued onto the wall. How does it work? It is attached on top of the waterproofing, creates an air gap and channels water down to the drainage along these protruding bumps. The advantages of installing this mat or roll membrane are that it protects the main waterproofing from the pressure of the wall. The downside is that it cannot be used solely for waterproofing. You need to first apply a liquid waterproofing solution and only after that install this membrane. It only works in combination. Roughly speaking, it's just one more additional material. The third material you can also use is a roll bitumen polymer material. This is a roll material that is glued onto your wall or foundation. It has its advantages. It's quite inexpensive and easy to apply. The disadvantages, you can't smoothly cover all the corners. And of course, it has seams. If there is a seam, there is always a risk of water penetrating into the foundation. Drainage at the lower part of the foundation, drainage at the upper level, and possibly if you have a high wall, I would also recommend an intermediate level to catch the water and to redirect the downspout pipes to different sides and take them outside your property or at least beyond your foundation. 
waterproofing and water drainage are extremely important when building a foundation on a slope. If we compare it to building on a flat plot, these are completely different, incomparable things. On a flat plot, it's enough to create a reverse slope away from the foundation and the water will drain away. You don't need to do anything else. When building a foundation on a slope, it's absolutely necessary to plan all drainage systems and protect your foundation from water because the slope channels water and small streams can turn into rivers. Following these simple rules and the system for building a foundation on a slope will give you the chance to build your ideal foundation or face disaster. I hope you'll end up with the first option, an ideal foundation.